Recently, I heard some talk about the relationship between a membrane-type galvanic cell method oxygen sensor and acidic gas, but what kind of a property is acidic in the first place? It's true that when we're dealing with gas detectors, the term acidic gas does come up a lot. The antonym of acidic is alkaline or basic. In this lecture, we'll be learning about both properties, acidic and alkaline. If you use a special kind of paper, you can instantly tell the difference between an acidic aqueous solution and an alkaline aqueous solution. Do you know what it is? Oh, I learned it in school. Litmus paper, right? That's exactly it. It's the paper that turns red when you dip into an aqueous solution that's acidic and blue when a solution is alkaline. Litmus paper is used to give us a general idea as to whether something is an acid or an alkali. But in reality, acidity and alkalinity have varying strengths, and to find out that strength, we can use pH paper. For example, silane sensors, which are potentiostatic electrolysis method sensors, and phosphine sensors use a highly acidic aqueous solution called sulfuric acid in their electrolyte, so pH paper will turn a color close to red if it is dipped into the solution. Galvanic cell method oxygen sensors use strong alkaline water as the electrolyte, so it would be the opposite and the pH paper would turn something close to dark purple. I see. So we tell the difference between acidic and alkaline by a strength indicator known as pH. Colors changing through contact with a substance, it's like how detector tubes or chemical tape works, isn't it? Good observation, Ari. Actually, there are some apparatuses, such as some detector tubes or re ken Keiki's tape method sensors, that use reagents that produce a color change reaction when exposed to acidic or alkaline substances. Next, let's learn about neutralization, which is a reaction between an acid and an alkali. As I mentioned already, acidity and alkalinity have opposite properties of each other, but what do you think would happen if only the same amount of acid and alkali were to be mixed together? They'd become neutral, right? That's right. In practice, though, the mixture will not necessarily always be neutral because it depends on how strong the acid and alkali are, for instance, if an aqueous solution of hydrochloric acid HCl, acidic and sodium hydroxide NaOH, alkaline, both equal strengths, are neutralized, then, surprisingly, you would end up with salt water. What? Even though both hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide are poisonous substances, that toxicity disappears once they're combined? Yes. The formation of the substance called salt is also one of the characteristics of neutralization. Of course, the type of salt that is produced changes depending on the type of acid and alkali being mixed. Oh, and about that talk about the relationship between a membrane-type galvanic cell method oxygen sensor and acidic gas you said you heard recently, actually, if a membrane-type galvanic cell method sensor is used in an acidic gas environment, it will have a decreased sensor output. This phenomenon can also be explained through neutralization. I get it. So that's what you mean. The several hundred ppm of CO2 that are normally floating around in the atmosphere are, while weak, actually gas with acidic properties, so if a membrane-type galvanic cell method sensor were to be used in a location where the concentration of CO2 is consistently several dozen percent, the sensor sensitivity would decrease within a few months. That's the first time I've heard of CO2 also having an effect on a sensor. We really need to be aware of the environment where these things are installed, don't we? This was very enlightening, 